Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. All right, so I'm with Joe, and it's awesome to actually meet Joe in person. We've had a couple of conversations on the show. So Joe has been showing me around the display tank, which is just phenomenal in person. Thank you. And uh, the frag tank in the back and all that stuff. So it's just really chock full of cor corals, and I really thought it would be cool. I know there's been a ton of tours, Joe, of your, your tank and what have you, but I thought it would be cool for you to kind of point out some of your favorite uh, acros so uh yeah i mean there's just there's so much that's packed together in this tank that uh, it's kind of hard to unpack it all right but you know if you can kind of go through what uh really gets you jazzed and, and they don't have to be like the big right named yeah. expensive pieces you know they could be just something uh simple as a bird's nest when i say you got plenty of bird's nest in the yeah tank. i mean i'm a i'm an og like yourself sometimes you know i uh, a bird's nest like that gets me more excited than uh, a rainbow tinius or uh, the ORA two-tone um, bird's nest that I have here. Um, you know, what's my favorite? They're all my favorite, but like pieces like the um, this granulosa here, which I call it the Northern Lights granulosa. Is one of my favorites. Obviously, everybody loves the Jason Fox Jolt, which is you know right on top here. Um, I believe this is also one of my favorite, um, which reminds me a lot of the um, the OG Purple Monster. Although this is not all like the Purple Monster, but it has very similarities in color. Yeah, I believe it's called the Golden Meister um, from. A friend of mine, Reefer, uh, he goes by Coral Reef Tank. Yep. Um, he grows very, very good and healthy corals. Um, you know, the... Classic Green Valley Slimer, is that yeah, what Yeah, the at Classic there? Green Valley Slimer, which I'm trying to mix with another blue tip Slimer type of... Oh, yeah. Which you could see, this have the blue tips when the other ones doesn't, but... I don't think anyone should have a tank without that coral. Yeah, um, uh, love the staghorn look. You know, it, it just balances other color palette where it makes other corals actually look more colorful to a point. Um, the Walt Disney is also a very cool one, but right now the hottest coral in my head and for me is that hot pink. <laughs> bird's nest in the middle yeah there. and that's like a, a ten dollar yeah. a frag coral yeah right and um, um you know I'm, I'm trying to blast it with crazy amount of light to see if i can keep it that hot pink because if you drop it lower it will turn into like a reddish pink but it won't give you that hot pink um and then obviously on the other side there's a few other pieces the princess peach here but that's a princess peach. You know, another thing that I like, that I always liked, is the red dragon. Yes. You know, but uh, red dragons are very finicky. You know, they could grow and grow and grow, and then out of nowhere, it just RTS out of. That, that, no that's reason. like one of the more popular corals of my customers is a Tyre red dragon. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of different dragons out there. This but is, uh, I believe, this was a Tyre I had purchased a frag many years ago and I keep growing it and growing it and growing it from um, Greenwich Aquarium up in Connecticut. Yeah. Um, from Jason up there. Yep. And um, then, you know, I kept this island here with other dragons, like this is supposed to be the, what they called at one point, the Black Sabbath, you know, which is like a black dragon. There's a lot of the same coral, different yep. names. Uh, um, I think I see, uh, so, is that a Paletta pink tip in the middle there? Is um, that, uh, the Paletta pink tip, I mean, some people call all these paletta pink tips, although yeah, they, they, look they also very go by Rainbow Loom and, yeah. 
and they're all like different purple pink yeah up there is more like the creamsicles they're all same family um, but the real paletta pink tip is on the other side which I had purchased years ago and um, I don't think it's getting enough light to give me that pink tip that I normally you normally see on it yeah but yeah they, they're all the same thing I see uh, I see some other familiar uh, an Oregon blue tort frag looks like right there in the yeah. uh, middle there and the, then this is a, the Oregon tort that is these are the yellow tip. yellow tips and that one in the middle I believe is the Cali tort the Cali tort yeah um, and uh, if you notice like corals tend to grow the same like trees you know where yep they shoot away from another tree searching for light and um, you can see like that branch is going that way trying to get away from this but she better be careful because it's gonna go into the slime <laughs> um, uh, and um, this up here is supposed to be the, um, the pearlberry although it's yeah, not, that doesn't it's look not, like that doesn't yeah. look like the genuine pearlberry. It's, and not, the, it's not the ORA pearlberry. I'm not happy with, about it because um, I was promised that it wasn't. You ORA. got duped, huh? Yeah, <laughs> that's happened to me yeah. a few times with a pearlberry. So that I've coral, got several pearlberry imitations yeah. in my tanks. It is a pearlberry, but not the ORA. Yeah, the real. That's a, OG. Yeah, the ORA pearlberry is a very distinctive yeah. coral with a lot of pearlescent coloration yes. going on, and and I used to more have, dense branching. Used to have a nice colony of it, but I lost it years ago. So that coral will not be in my tank for too long until I get my hands on a real pearlberry. Yeah, um, I'm growing out. Of, I got a frag that I'm growing out. I finally got the real deal uh, pearlberry, but yeah. it's taken a while. Yeah, yeah. It, it takes, you know, like every coral key, it takes six months to a year from a frag to like settle in and start spurting. And then once it gets through that phase, then they just, yeah, they just go. I mean, yeah, uh, uh, I got frags in here that they've been here a year and they haven't done much. This, they were put in the same time as these corals were put in. And it just depends on the coral, you know. Some yeah. corals, obviously, you said you planted these basically as frags last November. In November. So I that's mean, not even a 12 months. The, this, yeah. this I, I keep forgetting the name of the Abro. Bleeding tree. You yeah. know, so I mean, was, that thing was, you know, put with my full hand in there. And now it's getting covered up and probably is going to loose tissue on the inside it's a good uh, it's a good problem to have man you know? all right in terms of like the lack of real estate <laughs> it's uh it's it but I mean, it, what's impressive to me is like the the density of corals that you have in the system and they're still you know they're all thriving so it's not like they're they're getting choked off by the uh one another in terms of the flow but i guess at some point in time you're probably gonna have to address yes that issue yeah i mean keep in mind you know i got flow always coming up from the bottom yeah so this is shooting flow up there is flow there are pipes here that are hidden with corals like underneath this um, Monty here there is a there's a pipe shooting flow this way there's one in the middle underneath this eye shooting to the middle same thing on the other side and then in the back here I got flow coming up like that so yep. it's not direct flow um, but honestly, corals don't like direct flow. Yeah. They just need water movement around them. Yeah. And um, I, I look at corals like from a coral this low or this low where my power heads are up here. They're happy. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, you know, um, in terms of the lack of uh, light penetration for some of these corals, you know, some of the uh, some of the acros. I mean, the birds' nests, you know, can handle that low light stuff. But some of the uh, the chalices. I mean, I'm not a chalice guy at all. But some of the chalices on the bottom there are getting practically no light. And they that's what they love. Yeah. Chalices are always grown. This the bottom way. of the reef. Vertical. Yeah. Not 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 horizontal. We 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 tend to put. You know, like chalices, like on a flat. That's the worst thing for a chalice because yeah. it's getting direct light. Yep. So, the more they're they're on an angle and the less light, very little flow, 
yeah. the happier they are. I mean, these chalices, these two, not the Raja. The Raja, I kept the original when I redid the tank. It wasn't this big, but it was still a nice size. But these two pieces here, this one on the inside, they were a frag. Yeah, wow. You know, and so, that's where they started out. Yeah, yeah, six months ago. Wow. I mean, uh, that's crazy. more than six months, it's in November. But yeah. they were just a frag. Um, yeah. So they don't like light. Like, for example, I have this one here, which I got to break this because it's covering it. I mean, that thing is literally under everything. Yeah. It's it's getting a little bit more light than these. Yep. Um, but, you know, that's why I tried to fill in where I cannot put an acro, I put a chalice or a monte of some sort. How are you um, How are you mounting, you know, some of these acros and corals and stuff? I mean, do you basically just putty the crap out of it, super glue and putty it, or do you have another method in terms of the rock work where you did some pre-drilling on the, no, the rock No, I mean, no? I, I, what I'm going to say is not something I recommend because, you know, it's, it, it gets dirty. Um, basically, my method and trick that I found out is that let's say I want to put a stag over here you know I find a hole or the right place where I'm gonna put my coral I take the actual glue the tube and square the little glue in that hole under the water under the water well wow. and now with my finger I paste it on the rock so this way it grabs and the is this rock. super glue yeah super glue you know yeah. and paste it but a warning you know don't pull your hand out too quick because fish tend to want to go <laughs> for that glue and you know what's going to happen yeah. it's going to glue their mouth it's not going to end well yeah. so that will be like the foundation the primer okay then i take the coral which i i always glue on a piece of rubble before i glue it to the yeah. rock so this way i always can pull it out you yeah. know it will encrust over your rubble and eventually goes on the rock but if you want to pull it out you're still pulling a coral out with incrustation on the rubble, not yeah. breaking the stem. And then I take that and put the glue on it, and one quick spurt of that accelerator and just put it right on the other glue. And it sticks like that. Yeah. yeah. You know. Um, oh, so you basically take it out of the water, you do the uh, whatever it is, Jurassic glue, super glue. Right. You hit it with the accelerator. One, and boom. one very little tiny. Accelerator. And then you got enough time, split second wise, to get in there and Just stick put it in, in there. Just in there and stick it in there, and yeah. it sticks almost instantly. Um, I mean, this hippo here knocks my coils constantly. If you look closely, you'll see fresh glues all the time because, you know, he swims and he knocks the coral out. It's on a branch. So holding a coral like that on a little tiny stick is not always easy. Yeah. You know, um, so that's how I do it. And then sometimes I even put like glue to the rock, hold it, and then even put rubber bands. Take yeah. a rubber band and, and yeah. attach it to other corals till that glue dries. Yeah. Um, well, it's a uh, it's amazing coral collection. I mean, you, and, and it's just, you know, like we talked about, the birds' nests are a very common coral. You don't see a lot of tanks with no. birds' nests anymore, you know. And you got the paleys in there, and the, the, the got a couple of mushrooms still, I guess, left over, right? And you got yeah, uh, that, some encrusting monties yeah. still. And the mushrooms were the original coral when I started out because this was. And you still can't get them out. You can't get them out. <laughs> No matter, every time I redo my tank, I go in there with the clippers and I clip these mushrooms with the rock. I mean, to really get yeah, them out. And still, yeah. one comes out from somewhere and then you have to, and then it just keeps going. And I'll tell you, the uh, one of my favorite parts of this uh, this tank is the uh, the overflow and the pipes in terms of that green star polyp. I love <laughs> that that stuff. That yeah. was like the first coral that, when I went to a local fish store in, uh, in Manhattan, in New York City, when I was much younger, that was like the thing that I got drawn to in terms of their uh, big display reef tank. They had green star polyp all over the back of the tank, and it's. I love it. It was, it was always one of my favorites. It's and it's, it's serving a functional purpose. It's hiding yeah. the pipes. It's hiding the pipe. It's taking nutrients, so it's controlling some nutrients for me for the SPS's sake. 
Um, and um, the only issue, I, you know, is growing on my overflow, so I constantly got to the cut, overflow, and yeah. you know, got to cut the slots through it. Um, although a piece fell into here, but for some reason, m miraculously, it's, it's grown. Not, <laughs> it's kind of like control. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yeah. it's, I thought it's that contained. it was just going to, you yeah. know, go everywhere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, look, it's it's a lot of fun, and um, I love it. I like to see a reef like growing almost into each other. Yeah. Um, it looks natural. It you know, gives it looks you like a natural nice look. But you're a um, reef look. You know, the only disadvantage at this point is that like I got dead shells. That I would love to get in there and pick and clean up, which I can. Oh, you should have seen my some of my old sand beds with like dead snail shells and dead hermit crab yeah. uh, shells. And I cannot get broken pieces of coral. Oh, you yeah. can't get through there. Man. No, that's it's a problem just, there, Joe. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's it over here. It's like maybe one inch between the coral and the glass. Well, <laughs> uh, you know, so Joe and I are trading some uh, some frags, so I uh, I am absolutely pumped to uh, to see what uh, what I get from uh, from Joe. I, I brought him some quality stuff, so yeah, I think uh, you got you got to make some room, dude. Yeah, I know. On your <laughs> side, I would definitely uh, you know this uh, probably that the first one to go is that uh, pearlberry the, uh, alike. Yeah. Um, I put uh, purple monster that you got me, or the home wrecker, or the Jason, uh, the Jackson, rainbow or, uh, tenuous. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, those are my favorite corals, also by far. Which I hope I don't kill the home wrecker, which I can't grow the home wrecker for some reason. But I'm gonna try to maybe find a different spot for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some but, people uh, do say it can be a little uh, sensitive. Yeah, I yeah. think it needs nitrates, and I think when I every time I tried it, my nitrates were very low. So I raised my nitrates to, I think, eight ppm now. I'm trying to see if it's a better effect in terms of, you know, coral. Although, always I always preached hundred to one. Which means I technically should have zero, zero, eight, and five states, and that's too high. Yeah, yeah. So it's always a delicate uh, balance there. You yeah. know. Um, so I'm gonna experiment and see if I can have not not hundred to one, and see if I see better or not. It's always something, right? Yeah. It's always something. But that's what the beauty of this hobby. If you get into the water of it, you know, if you get into that deeper think that let me try this let me yeah. see if I can pull that color when I have this I got these better colors I got less color on that coral so that's the thing I think it's a balance um, that we try to find because I don't think that our levels are good for every coral yeah they might be good for uh, certain corals but not for others so if you want to have um, a good color on everything you got to find that medium yeah it's yeah. not easy man but uh, obviously it, you've got the uh, you got the touch with this tank for sure you know, um, but listen Joe man thank you so much for inviting me into your uh, home I was very uh, I was I've thank been, you for it's, uh, it's been a while you know I've been trying to like uh, you know see this tank and it's been such a treat so I think uh, it was a year ago when you hit me up and I was going through yeah the that was a bad time the, the disaster <laughs> of the tanks I said I don't think you want to be yeah. you know you want to see well my this is right like now. not what I expected a year yeah. later after disaster near disaster you know, so um, uh, uh, it was exactly a year ago when I was going through uh, plumbing issues chiller issues yeah. almost crashing everything and um, losing half my fish um, yeah yeah, time flies. And, well, uh, the resiliency yeah. of the tank uh, comes through because, and and, and of your, uh, you know, patience and fortitude, right? It's 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's it's not dedication. It's there's no time to fail. Yeah. You know. Yeah, you're um, taking care of animals, right? I so there's a lot of pressure sometimes. You know, there's no time to fail. You know, you gotta take care. These depend. Everything in here depends on us. Yeah. And, oh yeah. You know, when they die, we're failing them. 
Yeah. You know, it's not it's, a good feeling. It's not a good feeling. I don't look at it. Oh, that costed me a thousand dollars, or that cost me ten dollars. I look at it. I, you know what? I failed. I failed the call. I failed as a person. So, what is it that's going wrong that I could do different or better? But um, as this year passed by with this new everything, I got a little deeper into the chemistry of the water, um, and. I think it's a big, big thing, you know, uh, big improvement in terms of health of your coral. I mean, um, there are, that's like I said on your show, it pays to do ICP tests at yeah. least once a month. Yeah, you're doing weekly don't, now, right? Yeah, I two, mean, two, I'm doing it two weekly. Two services weekly. Don't do an ICP test when you have a problem. Yeah. It's too late. You need a baseline. I want it. So good. You want to do an ICP test? You know, if you can't do it weekly, do it monthly. So if you see something going out of line, you correct it before you have a problem. Yeah. You know, doing an ICP test when you're losing corals or where you have issues. Yeah, it's too late. It's too late. Yeah, you, you don't know, know. You don't know what it's what, what to compare it to. So you know, a thirty dollar ICP test. You can't afford thirty dollars for an ICP test, but meanwhile you're buying a fifteen hundred dollar um, yeah a splice from uh, Top Shelf Aquatics. You know, I mean, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's the way I see it. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, my friends tell me, "Are oh, you crazy? Why am I crazy? It's thirty dollars." Yeah, you know, Not in the grand scheme of things. In the grand scheme of things. Yeah, it's worth you know, the investment. I totally agree. It's uh, what are you gonna buy with thirty dollars nowadays in in our hobby? Nothing. Yeah, not not. Uh, I mean, you, you know, got uh, you know pretty much what you know in, in terms of those uh, corals and and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, well, listen, dude, thank you so much again, and um, yeah, folks. Um, God bless. It was a pleasure, man. Thank you for coming by. Um, uh, we've been planning this for over a year yeah. now. So. Yeah, and uh, we're, we're yeah, going to be getting together again uh, in a couple of days yes. over at Andrews, so yeah. I'm, I'm well, pumped uh, to, uh, to see that. I'll wait till you see uh, Polo. I mean, you, you think this is cool? This is, <laughs> this is like uh, not even uh, a sizable sump for, for all his tanks <laughs> over there. Well, um, yeah, and uh, hopefully we'll do a video over there. But uh, yeah. anyway, folks, uh, that'll do it for this uh, little uh, mini tank tour. And thank, uh, thanks to Joe again. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Until next time, be safe and be well. Later.